Welcome to Pragmatic Odoo Construction Management Module. Pragmatic has developed a module for specifically the construction uh, business vertical where it can be used by uh, different uh, sect of uh, people in the construction industry wherein we can have developers, builders, infrastructure developers, contractors, subcontractors use the system to go ahead and make it work as per their requirement. Pragmatic has made an effort to go ahead and put in all the standard construction uh, steps, standards uh, in a way uh, that suits up to uh, project management as well as construction project management related data uh, wherein we have created a set of tasks, bill of quantities and related information which can go ahead and make it easy for a construction person to use the system. Here we start with a project template wherein a list of steps that is required to generate a construction project uh, is pre-recorded. So once I have a template, I'll go ahead and select I need to create a new project based on a predefined template. Now that we just created a new template, I have renamed the project name where we have a list of tasks which is already defined which is inherited from a list of a predefined tasks. The moment that we created the project, if you see here, the total cost and related information are right now not populated. So the next step that we need to do is to assign a BOQ, a quantity takeoff based on the plan for this particular bill. Here we are at the bill of quantity wherein I select a project. So from the project I am selecting the list of items. Now here in a BOQ I have got the concept of 4M, the man, material, machine, labor and an optional way of using a work breakdown structure to go ahead and create work packages whatever is the approach to suit in based on your project management procedures. Now let's see how to add a BOQ. So here as I said we have this option to go ahead and select among the equipment, labor, material or subcontractor. Now the equipment the moment that is select it moves into the asset pool of the company and then select the list of items that is there in the asset pool. So it is directly taking an asset which ideally is there in the asset pool. So the relevant information that is required is passed into the accounts as well and this particular asset say for instance I have a, a bobcat. A bobcat of uh, say Python. I can go ahead and put it in my asset category which is uh, a moving asset and then the moment that I say this is my gross value and the rental of this automatically gets uh, added to the cost head of the project. Now that I have added my bobcat uh, to the project, next is the labor. So here when I say labor it is the man, uh, the man of the the company, the man hours that you're spending on the, the company, the project. The beauty of the pragmatic uh, module is that we are linking the OBS, the uh, uh, organizational uh, breakdown structure directly linked with the project. You can go ahead and select the designation and automatically the salary heads that is apportioned to that particular person or that designation is linked to the project and considered as a project expense. So when I select my resource, that which is an employee, say for instance a senior manager, I can go ahead and put as uh, a full-time employee. Okay. So which ideally means I'm linking my OBS or my organizational breakdown structure directly to my project. I'm not linking it at a uh, person level, I'm not directly linking it a resource, I'm taking a designation which I really need to be linked to that particular. Next comes the most, most important uh, part of a, a construction project which is the direct material that is used in the project. So I have, for example, I've just created a cement. So the moment that I select cement, its price which is 
um, the latest price which is acquired from the market is what is populated. So we have this option of doing the bid analysis and putting the best price. So having done that, the latest price get populated onto my project head. Another addition is the service provider. The moment that I select a subcontractor, a product type of service gets added here and I select what type of service is a service provider going to provide me. So if I say he is a painter, I can go ahead and put uh, the price here at what price am I going to get uh, the painting job done per square feet so if that is a defined uh, norm as per this particular service provider this automatically gets added to the uh, project head again now we come to a, a complete different paradigm of uh, project management which is using the WBS and the work package and arriving at the cost codes at the last level of your uh, uh, WBS or the work breakdown structure. Here we have to select a work package. If that is the approach, then the direct cost head, the direct cost part of the 4M method can be avoided. We can directly start working with the work package. Now let's go ahead and see in detail how to create a work package so that when I select a work package that get populated into the bill of quantity. Coming into the details of a work package, we have a set of predefined uh, work package based on the international standard. You can define your work packages. It's a it's a course code library if I would uh, say put it in the terms of uh, standards. Now let's quickly go and see how do we create one. I'm trying to do a piling. So if I go ahead in my cost header, I select what are my actual course codes that is required. So I select here and I can see it's uh, bringing with a cost. Now I have not added my units, so immediately go ahead, add your units, wherein I say the unit price is say just 200 and uh, the quantity that I have to do is uh, 1000 of uh, 1000 square meters or square feet of uh, uh, say land. So the moment that I do, I see that the cost is uh, updated here, when I save, it immediately gives me the total cost of the work package. So immediately you get the work package done and you are able to select the work packages and n number of work packages completes your BOQ. So that gives you a total uh, BOQ with uh, the quantity, uh, with uh, an estimate as well, which can roll up and give you the complete uh, project cost. So let's be, let, let's having selected this, let's go back and see if the BOQ selection has given me the total cost and the kind of tolerance that I need to use. So now we have the details of uh, the equipment cost, the estimated total cost, then what does the work package cost because I have not selected any work package here, uh, it is not showing up, and the labor cost and the material cost. So this is how uh, you arrive at a breakdown a price and also you have this option of revising a BOQ based on the negotiation that happens or any reworks that happen. The moment we click on new revision. It get revised and you are open to go ahead and make the changes so now if you see we have got the revised version which is version 2 which is latest and we can go ahead and go ahead and make the changes as required and then it will be the latest version that your task and the actual execution would consider for now having set your uh, cost your uh, estimate and your budgeted cost as in where you need to run the project. Let's see how in actuals you capture uh, the expenses and if there are any running account bills that is happening, any sales order or uh, purchase order that is generated, how the pragmatic order module uh, deals with it. So here in task what we are looking at is a Kanban view of uh, the task. We can have multiple stages to show where and how a task is progressing. Another uh, cutting edge uh, planning tool that is included in Odoo is the uh, the schedule, the schedule and the schedule maintenance that is being added here. If you see that this was the initial one with the planning done, you can see that this particular uh, way how the tasks are aligned to perform in action. So if the, the complete uh, project is 
uh, starting and it is ending at this particular date wherein all the tasks are aligned as per the date and whenever there is a delay or whenever there is an early start or uh, a change in the plan the system automatically identifies let's see how that would vary if I'm changing leveling here to a uh, the last part just for the sake of it now I just move and then when I come back I can see that leveling has moved down here where it is automatically taking that particular uh, date now in order to capture the actuals this is what we do in uh, the the pragmatic module where we capture the details of uh, a task at the actual level so if I select those estimated items would only be populated here at the estimated quantity and I can say that it is consumed and the use quantity is 250 or say let's take a case of where is only 200 consumed it would have this option to go ahead and keep 50 as a backlog and you'll get a later uh, update on that so this indirectly manages your budgeting where there is you cannot request for a, an item which is not linked to this particular task it also have uh, the the running the budget running in two different ways the budget on quantities and the budget on the total price now having said that this tracks the actual conception we also have this option of capturing your uh, QA the QA on each task and the report is generated once the QA is passed only then we consider this task as uh, complete so that would take care of the QA certification for all the interim payments and say probably if you're a contractor it shows that uh, you can give this uh, QA reports to the, the client uh, in case of a builder the other way around we can go ahead and give it uh, to the end users and get the uh, payments done so having mentioned that uh, that is all about the details on uh, the task let's go and see the extra information where we are ca capturing the starting and end date based on actuals and we also have this endpoint report coming in with uh, uh, a variance that ends on the the actuals versus uh, the estimated ones and also the task delivery is if there is an endpoint say for instance we all work in this kind of a scenario where stage wise deliveries need to happen so if that is a uh, deliverable attached to any task or a group of tasks we go ahead and capture it here so with this i think we are coming to a logical end of the end-to-end uh, delivery on the construction module uh, we can go ahead and discuss more and uh, we can give you a full-time demo in case if you get in touch with us uh, contact us sales at practic.co.in uh, hope you have uh, a clarity on how pragmatic auto construction module works uh, let's go ahead and engage and see how we can help you better thank you